There's tremendous prophetic significance in what happened in Turkey over the weekend. I'm going to tell you about it, how it relates to the Bible, because I think you'll be interested in that. But all, of course, the headlines today has to do with the killing of the police. This man was looking for cops to kill. And now investigators are trying to find out more about Gavin Long, the former Marine who ambushed police in Baton Rouge on Sunday and murdered three of them. We are learning more about the police officers long shot to death. And now investigators are looking into the possibility that he may have had help. Caitlin Burke has the story. A nation and its police officers on edge once again. Around 8.40 a.m. on Sunday morning, Baton Rouge police responded to a report of a man with a gun dressed in black. Devastating audio of officers walking into an ambush. Officers engaged the subject at that particular time, and he ultimately died at the scene. Three officers, Brad Garofola, Montrell Jackson, and Matthew Gerald, all dead. In an emotional Facebook post only days earlier, Jackson wrote about the difficulties he faced being a black man and a police officer. He said, in uniform, I get nasty, hateful looks, and out of uniform, some consider me a threat. He continued, I'm working in these streets, so any protesters, officers, friends, family, or whoever, if you see me and need a hug or want to say a prayer, I got you. Jackson was a 10-year veteran of the Baton Rouge Police Department. Matthew Gerald was a father of two daughters and a veteran who served both with the Marines and the Army in Iraq. Brad Garofola, father of four, served 24 years on the Baton Rouge Police Department. Authorities are now looking for answers. The gunman killed at the scene has been identified as Gavin Long, who launched yesterday's attack on his 29th birthday, an African-American military veteran from Kansas City who served five years in the Marines. He claimed online that revolutions of victims weren't successful through peaceful protests, but only through fighting back and bloodshed. But President Obama took the opposite view on Sunday. We as a nation have to be loud and clear that nothing justifies violence against law enforcement. This comes as Baton Rouge is still reeling from the death of Alton Sterling, the black man who was shot and killed during a struggle with police only two weeks ago. Louisiana State Police Superintendent Mike Edmondson asked for prayers for the city of Baton Rouge. Caitlin Burke, CBN News. Well, we've got a nation that's torn apart. We've got to bring racial justice, but it's time to, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> to recognize that we cannot kill police officers, and they're going to have to come up with a strategy to overcome this because they're very vulnerable right now, and we need them out patrolling the streets. When you talk about tight security, they have thousands of security in Cleveland for the Republican convention, even before the uh, shootings in Baton Rouge and the terrorist attack in France. Wendy Griffith has that l report. Thanks, Pat. Amid that tight security, you mentioned the convention opens today with Donald Trump looking to prove to voters that he's worthy of the White House. And in addition to Republican delegates, many Christians also traveled to Cleveland to call out to God on behalf of America. David Brody brings us the story. Here in Cleveland, Convention Week didn't start out with politics. It started with praise. We stand in your presence, we Thousands of Christians came here to pray for revival in America. The Bible says, if my people who humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, there will be a healing and hearing from heaven. Good news for those who understand that only Jesus saves, certainly not any politician. It's not about political parties. It's not about our personal preferences or den denominational preferences. Today, it's all about Jesus. This week, it will be all about Donald Trump. He comes here with one goal, convincing skeptical voters that he's presidential material. Picking Indiana Governor Mike Pence as his running mate seemed to help him on the credibility front, but evangelical leaders say it's going to take more than that. 
It's going to have to be Donald Trump is going to have to move the constituency. He's going to have to say things that evangelical pro-life Catholic Christians uh, want to go out and work for him and move into the into the marketplace. In the political marketplace, he's being outspent in key battleground states and trailing in others. Facing relatively high negatives with voters, Trump needs to reach minorities, and he's getting help from a key pastor. You have no reason to be afraid. Somebody give God glory right there. Daryl Scott is pastor at Cleveland's New Spirit Revival Center, and he will speak during primetime at the convention later this week. His support for Trump has led to criticism in the African-American community. You get the name calling. Uh, and because they don't know him and they let people accuse him of being racist and different things like that, that he's not. And so, you know, and then if you defend him, you're automatically a sellout or an Uncle Tom. Belinda Scott, his wife and co-pastor, have known Trump for years. She says they've seen him grow spiritually. He really is pursuing a deeper spiritual life. I'm, I, I can sense it. My prayer for Mr. Trump is that he will be more sensitive to God than he's ever been before. Supporter Amarosa, who gained fame on Trump's reality show Celebrity Apprentice, says she's keenly aware of the racial tension in the air and is praying for calm. I call in the name of Jesus because I believe that prayer changes things, but more importantly, prayer changes hearts. And so I believe that we have to rise above partisan politics petty debates and arguments, and we have to unite as the American people. The good news for Donald Trump is that there appears to be no official challenge to his nomination this week here in Cleveland. That means here inside the arena, it should be relatively calm and a controlled situation. Outside the arena, all bets are off. Protests could happen. That means violence could rear its ugly head and we'll be monitoring events all week long. David Brody, CBN News, here in Cleveland, Ohio. And we look forward to that. Thanks, David. Well, Turkish warplanes have been patrolling the skies over Turkey, signaling that leaders believe the threat to the government is not over yet. Turkish President Erdogan has blamed part of the military for trying to take over the country over the weekend. He's been rounding up thousands of men. Nearly 300 people were killed in that coup attempt and more than 1,400 wounded. Turkey accuses an Islamic cleric, Fatullah Gulen, of orchestrating the coup. They want him extradited from the U.S. CBN News reported years ago about, about Gulen's efforts to organize a global Islamic movement from his headquarters in Pennsylvania. And you can find our look at the controversy surrounding him at CBNNews.com. Pat, what's going on? Well, I think here's the deal, uh, Wendy, and I think, ladies and gentlemen, you need to understand when that coup took place, I said, you know, that goes contrary to prophecy. And uh, I, I don't believe it's going to happen. And indeed, it didn't happen. And it looks like now it may have been staged to set up Erdogan. You see, here's what the Bible says. And I want you to look at it very carefully because it, it, it's directly uh, attached to what is going on here in Turkey. Here's, the, here's what Ezekiel said, chapter 38. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the land of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I'm against you, Gog, prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. I will turn you about, put hooks into your jaws, and bring you out, and all your army, horses and horsemen, all of them, Splendidly attired, a great company with buckler and shield, all of them wielding swords. Now look at this. This is important. Persia, Ethiopia, and put with them, all of them with shield and sword. And this is the one that's important. Gomor with all its troops. Togarma from the remote parts of the north with all its troops. Many people with you. Be prepared and prepare yourselves. You and all your companies that are assembled about you and be a guard for them. And then it says in that, that uh, uh, God is going to bring that great group, group of people. But who are those people? Gomer, Gomer is Turkey. Uh, Put is Libya. Uh, Ethiopia is, of course, Ethiopia. Persia is Iran. 
So the, there's going to be the Caucasus region of the Muslim states in, in the Russian area, along with a great army from Turkey and the uh, Libyans. And uh, you've got uh, Kush, which is uh, uh, Islamic right now, uh, down uh, uh, in, in the northern part of Africa. So all that's coming together according to the Bible. And Turkey is key. Now, it looks like Erdogan, this whole thing was a, was a, was a setup. He is going, he's purging the military. He's purging the courts. He's putting all kinds of people in jail. And when it's all finished, he is going to be the undisputed dictator of Turkey. And he's going to swing it in the Islamic fashion. It's going to be a radical Islamic state hating Israel. That's what's going to happen. And he will be a key player in a coalition in the last days to come against Israel. That's why this coup sounded good, because they would take it back to democracy. Uh, like, uh, you know, the early days, it was supposed to be a democratic uh, uh, country. But no, it's going to be a radical Islamic country. And that's what you were looking at. So please believe me. Don't be applauding Erdogan. He is going to institute a dictatorial uh, power that we have not seen in a long time. It's going to be terrible for Israel. Wendy? In other news, recording artists, preachers, and believers from around the country packed the National Mall in Washington, D.C. this past weekend to pray. The Together 2016 event had been in the works for the last five years and was scheduled to last 12 hours. But extreme heat and hundreds of ambulance calls forced the Parks Department to shut it down after just seven hours. Ephraim Graham was there. Saturday temperatures quickly climbed above 90 degrees here in Washington, D.C. But the steamy weather didn't keep hundreds of thousands from answering the call to come to the National Mall, to stand together, worship together, and pray together. This isn't about perfect people gathering. This is about imperfect people. And we're all gathering to seek the perfect one. There's only one answer. It's Jesus. Nick Hall is the man behind this massive event called Together 2016 and recording artists like Hillsong United, Lecrae, and Matthew West lent their voices to the experience. I was overwhelmed by the crowd, just the size of the crowd. There was thousands, hundreds of thousands of people's, people standing in that, uh, that place today celebrating the God who forgives, the God who renews, and the God who can bring healing to our hurting nation. Packing the National Mall with a million people to pray has been in the works for the last five years. But the timing of it, considering what's happened in our world in the last few weeks, couldn't have been more perfect. Unfortunately, extreme heat forced the Parks Department to shut things down about five hours early. That decision came after hundreds had to be treated for heat-related illnesses. I love that we're together. It's good to see a glimpse of what heaven might be like one day. This is just a glimpse, but when it comes down to it, we got it at one point, whether it's at 9 o'clock or now, be ready to walk out of here and live it out. Christian concert organizer Ryan Romeo was there when Minister Nick Hall first announced plans for Together 2016 five years ago. How bummed are you that it had to end early? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, it's, it's five years of them planning that. Uh, that, was, that was a hard thing, but, you know, I talked to one of the leaders right after and he said, you know, I just got to trust that the Lord had something in that, you know, even with tears in his eyes, he said, I have to trust that God knows what he's doing and that something amazing still happened, even though we had to end it early, you know. Because the true measure of success is what changes after leaving the park. Ephraim Graham, CBN News, Washington. Well said. Thanks, Ephraim. Well, the country of Ghana is home to more than 25 million people, with 5 million under the age of 14. It's also home to a brand new center for children sponsored by CBN's Orphan's Promise. These beautiful children I'm standing with are dressed in their very best and filled with excitement because today we cut the ribbon on the Village of Hope. <laughs> Woo! 
Each one of them has come here needing a family. They'll be in an apartment with a mom and a dad, six children to a home. And there also is a beautiful chapel at the center of this place that includes a library. There's a soccer field I'm looking at, lots of activity for them. And an interesting story here too about a young man named Richard who was actually educated by Orphan's Promise. He majored in agricultural technology and today he is building and running fish farms here on this property that will feed protein to these children and also supply income for the Village of Hope. I also had the privilege of dedicating the chapel with a message taken from Psalm 68. God said, I will put the lonely in families. Why? Because family is a God idea. Children are meant to be raised by moms and dads who love them and help them envision who they are and dream for their futures. And that's why we're here, because in this house, children who have found themselves without that are going to be redeemed by the mercy and the grace and the love of their heavenly father. And we get to watch it. It's going to be an amazing miracle. And our Terry Mason is just back from Ghana. Terry, what a heartwarming story. How many kids are going to actually be able to call that place home? Well, Wendy, 30 some right now, but there will be eventually as support comes in another building next door. These are actually separate homes, six of them in this first building. There will be six more in the other, about six to seven children to an apartment with a mom and dad. So they're growing up in a family scenario with siblings. And most of all, the Arise Chapel is right at the center of this. They're growing up knowing the love of Jesus Christ. And so we're working with the Village of Hope team and Orphans Promise is teaming up with them. Lots of wonderful support coming uh, from friends of that organization. And we love to partner with people who are doing it well. But what was so exciting to us was to find Richard. Here was this young man that we had found in junior high. We've educated him all the way through college. He's got a degree in agricultural technology. And here he is now living there, raising fish to feed the children and as a micro enterprise opportunity to help support the place as well. God redeems on all levels and the kids are beautiful well the people are beautiful we had a wonderful wonderful trip and uh, we've got lots more stories coming up so watch for the Ghana stories yet to come